And we are live. What's up, guys? This is Ruben on Dub's podcast, Connection Loop. And I'm psyched to have Ryan here with me. And Ryan is a friend of Violet, Violet Rainwater, whom we uh, actually had another podcast with, which, which was just a really profound conversation. I encourage you guys to check that out. Uh, in case you guys don't know, Dub is a video communication platform. We allow people to quickly create, share, and track videos. We've got a Chrome extension, a Gmail integration. It works really nicely. Check it out at dub.com. Ryan, talk to me, man. What is your mission? What are you up to? You've got a beautiful beard. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Part of my mission is to, well, the biggest part of my mission is to help others find theirs, to be honest. So Ooh. I spent over 20 years in nonprofit work and full-time ministry and then came into into business and corporate America and realize there's for a lot of us, there's a missing element of, of what we do. And that is why we do what we do in the first place. Right. And so our mission, uh, why we wake up every morning, what gives us a sense of fulfillment in our life and bringing that into the workplace and coming along alongside companies that want to build that type of culture. That's what I do on a daily basis. So how do you go about doing that? Because when I always think about mission, I think of a, a series of failures and accidents. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are very few people that I know, probably less than 3% that have known their mission since a young age. And when I say young age, that could be grammar school or high school or, or even college. Most of the time, it's a nonlinear path. And then something happens, there's a catalyst, there's a realization. Talk to me, What what is your sort of guiding light on that? You know, it depends on if I'm talking to the individual like you're like you're um, discussing here or if I'm talking to a company. Guys, right? so if I'm talking to the individual, I would say it all it goes all the way back to what you've come through your past. Um, that's that's what gives us compassion, what we've come past ourselves, And so compassion gives us that sense of passion for something specific. So if I've had some type of illness or adversity, a lot of times my life will want to lean in that direction to help others in that same way. Mm. So compassion comes from what we've come past. That's where we get passion, where we get purpose, where we get mission, right? So that's the individual aspect of what I work with. But when I'm working with a company, uh, what we do is rather than starting with why we do what we do, we actually start with what. And that is what do you do as a business? What's your core competency, your strategic intent? And how do you align that with a greater sense of purpose and a greater sense of why? So looking for that alignment is really crucial. So if I'm a company that's dealing with retail or maybe I'm a, I work with a hotel chain that, that after uh, the end of the year, they have a lot of uh, opportunity to reach out to those that are homeless, uh, to those that may need uh, help in terms of you know, um, supplying uh, necessary things within their household. And, and these, this hotel chain has all of that uh, resource. And so what resources do you have and what good can you do out of the, the what you do every day already? So really helping companies to find that alignment. Well, this reminds me of, a, of an exercise that I went through at some point in my life where we were trying to figure out what the mission statements of, of major companies were. And I remember it was a it was kind of a group exercise. I think I think it was in grad school actually. Now that I think about it, and it was it was difficult because we we would say, well, Facebook wants to connect people, and Google <laughs> wants to do this, and Apple, you know, we would come up with these missions, but they weren't actually accurate. They weren't correct because if you look at really the core mission of a lot of these companies and that whole kind of evolution and really spiritual process that, that they've gone through, sure. um, it's, it's much deeper. It's much higher level. It's, it's, it's about happiness and it's about, you know, communication and it's about human beings and existentialism. And it's, it's not necessarily about the thing or the product or the service. Sure. So I think that it's, you know, I see this as a, as a, as a spiritual process, almost really the corporate spirit, the individual spirit, you know, I really connect to the idea that, you know, starting with compassion, with empathy and understanding um, what we've come past. I think that's a really good articulation. I, I really connect to that. I think that's really interesting. And I think it's important that people do it. Yeah. You know, you talk about that spiritual component of, you know, and again, I spent over 20 years in, in the space of just that. Right. Like full time ministry, missional work. 
giving back, doing good, nonprofit starts with that sense of bringing my soul to to the day, right? Like who I am fully, what I'm compassionate about, my empathy, what I care most about, what moves me, what breaks my heart, and how do I address that in this world so that, you know, it sounds like it's cliche, but how do I leave the world a better place than what yeah. I found it, right? And so, but with companies, there's dynamic to to larger businesses that come into play, right? So I could talk to a CEO and say, what are you compassionate about? What do you care about? What are you empathetic about? But their employees may not have that same specific desire or passion that they do. And so rather than looking at the the uh, some total of one person's experience, we have to look at the idea of what are we all doing collectively together and how do we how do we lean that success and that profitability into the world? I call it purposeability. How do we how do we mix profitability and purpose together? Purposeability where we know what we do. So I take I take companies through a whole like several um, hours of just working through like, what do you do as a company? How do you explain it to an eight year old? Right. Uh, what, what would you say to an eight year old? No business jargon. It's exactly what you said. No product. You know, what what do you do every day and how would you describe it to an eight year old? Then the second step I take a company through, and this is really quick, I won't take a bunch of time with this, but in the workshop, I say, if I gave you a billion dollars and you had unlimited resource to, to start a nonprofit or a 501c3 across the world that would serve what you do that you describe to an eight-year-old, what, what would you do if, if you could just start anything you wanted to change the world with unlimited resource, what would you do? And then the third step, obviously, is saying, I'm not Bill Gates. I don't have a billion dollars. But what resource do you have that serves what you would have done had you had unlimited resource? And then what commitments can you start making on a quarterly basis to start doing that good right now? And so that's really how we help companies in a very practical way, because sometimes culture and doing good and giving back um, sounds very mystical and purpose and mission. And it's hard to like, you know, we can put it on a wall, but how does it really touch the heart of our employees and customers? And then we work through like, what are we going to, what do we do with this? What's the next steps and how do we align with our customers and with our employees so that it becomes a movement rather than just a moment of, aha, this is what I'm supposed to do in the world. But how do we commit to this as a sustained movement of doing good and giving back and caring about the world? Well, I think this is the, I think this is the most important theme um, in business in, in 2020. I, I truly believe this. I, I believe that companies now have to put aside maximizing shareholder value yeah. And they need to figure out what larger purpose is, what larger good is. We've seen so many corrections. We've seen so many financial corrections for major, major, you know, multi-billion dollar corporations from making poor choices that yeah. are the antithesis of leaving the world a better place. Yeah. And I think that this really, I think it it's a DNA thing though. So, yeah. you know, one of my biggest challenges at this is that when a company has been around for years... And they've set the DNA to go in and to, to change this and to re-engineer the way that the shareholders, the, the owners, the employees, the partners, the, the entire ecosystem, everyone that's involved, that's not an easy task. Now, is sure. it impossible? I don't, I don't think so. But what, what is happening, though, is, is companies, are their eyes are getting opened because they're realizing that their competitors are company, many of which are new, some of which are old. They're coming through and they're saying, we are going to put purpose, good, people first. Yeah. And as, as a result, they're getting tremendous amount of success. So either way, you know, companies <laughs> are going to have to, in my opinion, they're going to have to figure out how to, how to re-articulate uh, to this model. I, I believe in it that much. Yeah. I mean, it's something that is just, um, um, we just have to do it this way. We, we have to rehumanize business. We have, to, we have to get back to what makes us human. And, and the value of that um, in terms of what we can do with our success in the world. And, and I agree, it's difficult to reorchestrate what culture has been within an organization for decades. And, and the experts, and I'm, I'm only a, I'm a practitioner, 
Um, but experts say in order to really have substantial culture change, organizational change takes about 36 months. <clears throat> what we did is we looked at the success we had at a, a large company across 42 states with over 3,000 employees. That's where I started what's called culture of good. Yes. Uh, we, we started um, looking at what, why did it work? Uh, and, and we didn't just sit in a room and say, let's figure this out on a whiteboard. We sat down with people. <clears throat> That's one of the ways to rehumanize business is actually sit down with the humans that are part of that business. We sat down and we said, what was special about it? What made it work? What what made it stick? Why why do you want to keep working for this business because of the culture of good? Like what what are those elements? And and we were able to really identify ten different steps um, that the company, uh, having took those steps, built a sustainable movement within the business. And so we took those ten steps developed uh, an online platform for companies to be able to watch video and learn and have a playbook instead of saying, all right, in theory, this makes a lot of sense. Businesses are supposed to care and have a bigger, higher purpose. But how do we do this practically? Like we have to give people a playbook and companies a playbook to be able to live this out. And so that eventually we developed that. We have a book called um, uh, Build a Culture of Good. Uh, how to unleash results by letting your employees bring their soul to work every day. Nice. That's, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So that's, you know, so it's more than theory for me. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at bringing this into the business world in, in a way that we could, we could really have companies differentiate themselves by that higher purpose and build their culture, whether they're a startup or they've been around, you know, the company I started, the work that I was doing in with the culture of good, we launched it in a company that had been around for almost 30 years. But we've we've since launched in startups with eight people and uh, companies that, that have thousands and companies that have a few. And and it's scalable because good is good is good for everybody. Whether you have 10 people in your business or 10,000, it's it's you know, it's it's really getting the key stakeholders involved and who are those influencers within the business and, and how do we get them to really buy in first? Even though culture is everybody collectively doing this together uh, and believing together and feeling something together, if you don't have leadership at the very beginning that's bought into this, then it's a mute point. It doesn't, it doesn't matter uh, because people see right through it and it can't just be another program. It has to be exactly what you're talking about, the, like the DNA of who we are. <clears throat> yeah, man. So, I mean, what is your vision for the future? I mean, a lot of, a lot of people are, are kind of pessimistic. What, what is, it's 2020. What does it look like in 10, 20 years? 10, 20 years? That's, I, I never have a 10 to 20 year vision, man. <laughs> I'd love to see thousands of companies that say we're a culture of good company, which means we are actively involved in making the world a better place and our employees and customers are a part of that. So, so rather than having companies with a CEO that writes a check and gives it to a charity, I, I wanna see movements of businesses where everyone collectively as a community is going into the world and, and making that better. And so I'd love, to see, I'd love to see this movement continue to grow over the next 10 to 20 years. Over the next year, you know, I'm I'm out there speaking consistently and really just trying to spread this uh, message and and the awareness of what it what it means to do business with a sense of purpose and a sense of calling uh, in our everyday lives and really leaving a legacy that 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 says you know with our lives like I was here and and I had a heart while I was and and that's really what I want to do over the next ten to twenty years. It just got muted for some reason. Oh, there oh, you are. You know what? We had a little <laughs> mute error there. So tell me something. How do people uh, find you on social channels, web address? Yeah, social, I'm on uh, LinkedIn and Twitter. So LinkedIn, it's um, McCarty Ryan, and Twitter, it's Ryan McCarty. Uh, so I was one of the early adopters with Twitter. So I actually have my name, which is nice. <laughs> nice. But you can reach out to me on RyanMcCarty.com or, you know, check out more about Culture of Good at CultureofGood.com. 
Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's, I'm easy to get a hold of. Usually I'm on LinkedIn every day. Um, for, for sake of my mental health, I'm not on, on the weekends, but throughout the week, I'm on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Special, man. Yeah. Fair enough. Please, uh, please mention me in some of your uh, future posts and, uh, oh, yeah. I'd love to, love to stay and connect, man. I, I love your mission. And I think that everyone needs to hear it, man, because this is the future of business, man. It's, it's about good. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I would say it's it's the present of business as well. Like companies that aren't aren't really developing and, and growing in this space um, will soon miss out. Because if you don't have companies that care about purpose and all they care about profit, then you're left with employees that only care about paychecks. And, um, you know, in, in today's world, people can get paychecks anywhere. Employees, customers, the world is looking for that sense of meaning and fulfillment and purpose. And so when we give that and we offer that, uh, we really, we really say something special about who we are and what kind of heart that we have. So, um, and we're all about, uh, Violet was telling me about your product and we're members now. And, uh, and so we're going to start using your solution through email and, and we're excited to spread our message through, uh, through email and video email. We're excited to use your, your stuff, man. Well, Hey, listen, we, we're all about, um, compassion, empathy, support, you know, a big part of our process is guiding people, training them. You know, we've spent, you know, years building our technology and we, we want to see you succeed. We don't succeed unless you do. So, um, let's please, uh, coordinate a call. I'd love to take you through the whole platform A to Z. Uh, I got some tips and tricks. Love to take you through that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I talked to Violet right before this call and she was like, tell him to reach out. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to get the training going. So she's, she's the one that'll probably do more of that, that work, but I'd love to be on that call too and, and learn how to use it as well. So it's Amazing. A great technology, man. Great stuff. Cool. Yeah. That, that is why the name of this podcast is called connection loop. <laughs> so wow. it is a loop and it's uh, more so I think it's a, it's a loop of good, um, and Ryan, I re really appreciate your time, man. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate you having me on and, um, yeah, just reach out on, on ryanmccarty.com if, if you want to connect and, uh, excited for the future, excited Thanks. what we're going to do together too, man. Awesome. Ryan. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right.